I'm the Bunny Man. And I'm Crazy Susie. And we are in the Eyes of Terror. And uh, we took a small break, I guess, again. We do apologize. I had a medication change and uh, wasn't quite myself. So thankfully that has been resolved and we're trying to get back on track. So in the season of love, we bring you three stories of murder and mayhem. All in the name of love. Valentine's. And as blood runs red, so does this holiday. So So what are you drinking? Wow, we taking that off, aren't we? So I'm drinking Bell's Robust Porter. It comes from Comstock, Michigan. Our award winning <laughs> Bell's Porter bridges the gap between malty brown ales and heavily roasted stouts. Notes of chocolate coffee and roasted barley are offset with just a slight hoppy bitterness. Enjoy any time of year. It's a certified independent craft. Mm hmm. Hmm. And. Yeah, it's a nice, dark, dark like my soul. What soul? Exactly. <laughs> the void that once held my soul. Well, I can definitely taste the uh, hoppiness of it and the uh, the coffee and the chocolate. So it's, it's a really smooth beer. I enjoy. It. And I realize I haven't been giving these beers a rating, so uh, I give this a rating a, a four out of five. I generally enjoy porters, and this one is on the more hoppier side of that, and it's nice to sort of have it at the end of winter. That's one reason why I chose this particular beer for tonight, because uh, by the time that we were recording this, we were randomly supposed to have snow. Yeah. Today we've had a 45 or so degrees. No, it was up in the 50s. Or... With rain? No rain. We had rain today. Mild rain, if anything. Yesterday we had some rain. It was in the 50s. And the day before, it was sunny and in the mid to late 60s. Didn't you go to the park like Monday? Yes. So. And tonight we're expecting snow. <laughs> Interesting. Welcome to the south. <laughs> Just welcome anywhere, but... I mean, I hate, I've always hated when people are like, well, whatever state, insert, wait 10 minutes. And I'm like, I get it, but that's everywhere. Uh, it's just unusual for this time of year to have this type of weather. I mean, we're usually starting to warm up and stuff like that. We do, And this is, a rain, this is our major rainy season. Wow. This is also a major planting season for us. So we have all this stuff going on, but it's unusual to have one to three inches depending on elevation well we had a major blizzard around this time of year back in the mid 90s yes but i, I mean I, I i mean that that was a long time ago but it does it has happened so i get it it's just i get so annoyed with like just insert fight wait five minutes it's just it's sort of a, a thing that irritates me it's just because everywhere i've ever lived and i lived in like four different states everybody says <laughs> that it's like I get it. Everybody acts like their state is unusual for the wait five minutes mm. thing. So, sorry, that was just a pet peeve thing. Other than that, uh, screw Cupid, and let's get into the... <laughs> let's get into the movie. Uh, what movie are we doing, anyway? I don't know. They don't care what I'm drinking. Oh, what are you drinking? I'm having the new Coca-Cola uh, energy drink. It was zero sugar. I'm having the zero sugar, uh, the cherry Coke energy drink. It's pretty good, especially if you're not one to have a lot of sugary sodas. And, um, you know, I'm not real big on energy drinks, but it's not bad. I had it one before and it tastes like cherry cola with a bit more caffeine in it, so. What? It just tastes like cherry Coke? Yeah. So it's not a bad thing and... I just can't, I don't think I can do full sugar anymore. So it is. It's just cherry Coke with a kick. And yeah. even the zero sugar one, it just tastes like their zero sugar cherry cola. So it just has a bit more caffeine. Mm -hmm. But like some energy drinks are bitter. They're kind of bitter, but this one, it just really tastes just like their zero sugar cherry cola. I'd rather drink this than, you know, liquefied Smarties. 
in a can. Oh, no. 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 Mm -mm. Because I feel like a lot of... Uh, I'm not quite sure if my teeth are going to fall out mm. after I drink some Monsters. Right. Some of them are just... Luke fights Smarties in a can. They're trying really hard to cover up that bitterness of the extra caffeine and... Um, you, you feel like a walking cavity after you drink one. <laughs> yeah. So. You could have just had, you know, some liquefied sugar and called it a day. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, okay, so what movie are we doing? We are doing Valentine, 2001. This movie was found on Vudu, and it's a free movie that you have to watch with ads. So, it's, not it's an option. Vudu is not a bad player, streamer. It's free. Yeah. Well, most of it. I mean, there's movies you can buy and rent. Right. This one was free. Yeah. See, you should have waited and had your energy drink with me. You wouldn't be yawning right now. Oh, so this is on, a Snow horror Day. mystery thriller. It's 96 minutes long. And IMDb gave it a score of 4.8 out of 10, which isn't too bad. The director is Jamie Blanks. The writers are Tom Savage. He wrote the novel. Donna Powers. Wayne Powers. Gretchen J. Berg and Aaron Harberts. Took a lot of people to pull this thing together, evidently. The cast is Dennis R Richards. Denise, sorry, Denise Richards. Good grief. She plays Paige Prescott. David Bregnes plays Adam Carr. Marley Shelton plays Kate Davies. Jessica Capshaw plays Dorothy Wheeler. Katherine Heigl plays Shelley Fisher. Hetty Burris plays Ruthie Walker. Some of the names that these characters were given, they kind of sound like uh, serial killer names. Yeah. You know, like the Ted Bundy-ish names. Anyway, if you would like to see the full cast list, you will find that on imdb.com. Because nobody has time for all that. This film was given an award. The golden trailer for the best voiceover. The location of this film was Vancouver and British Columbia, Canada. Oh, Canada. Sorry. The synopsis is five women are stalked by an unknown assailant while preparing for Valentine's Day. So basically, it's just a typical day. Yeah. So, we open up on a yearbook from 1988. Then we see a flashback to a dance, a dance to remember. And a not-so-handsome guy is going around asking girls to dance with him. And he is being rejected and in the harshest way ever. Like, ooh, I'd rather die. And other such fun, you know, go kill yourself. But he is not going to give up. He's going to continue on. Yep. Then we see flashes of yearbook with writing in it, such as, like, I hate them, I wish they would die. Then we see a boy ask out Dorothy, a chubby girl. They make out underneath the bleachers. She's big boned. Oh, big boned. Even her friend says, you weren't chubby. You were, you were big, heavy. Big. You were a little big bone. I was big boned when I ate half of a thing of KFC. That's just a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want beer on me, okay? Okay. Uh, and then the, some of the boys catch them, and they accuse <laughs> Jeremy of attacking Dorothy, the big They boned. ask her if he attacked her. And she says yes. And then, and then they drag Jeremy out from underneath the bleachers and start punching him, calling him a pervert. They strip him. They don't punch on his head first. Hmm? They dump a bowl of punch on his head first. Yeah, it's very Carrie-esque. Mm -hmm. And then they stomp him, and then it sort of pans out. Uh, and then we see this kid in, like, a cherub mask. And then, then we get 13 years later, we see a woman going on a date with a pompous guy named Jason. Who refer refers to himself in the third person. The entire time. But as they're having the date, he describes why they should mate. Then Shelly, who is the, the female date, gets the check, and Jason's not very happy, and they decide that they should split, 
and uh, each has to pay for their own order and go find out she pays she bought she got the more expensive type items and she wasn't too terribly pleased having to pay for her own meal well I, I guess it wasn't something that was talked about beforehand like, which is pretty rude I mean if you ask someone out on a date whether you're a male or female it's kind of implied that if you're interested in somebody in that way that you're it's your treat to take them out mm-hmm Unless you have a discussion about it beforehand. But I also think it's, you know, not polite to order the more expensive items either if the other person's no. paying. Again, uh, it, just, it it's, should be a discussion at the beginning. Yeah. If you don't have the money to pay for expensive things, no, I, don't I, take somebody to a fancy restaurant. Yeah, go to CeCe's. <laughs> <laughs> you hate CeCe's. I do. Uh, but Jason's not happy. Jason's not happy. Jason re- got rejected. Jason not happy. Jason not happy. I uh, wish Jason would climb out of the river and climb chop out of the Jasons. river. Oh, climb, uh, chop this Jason's head off. Jason on machine. Jason action. <laughs> <laughs> this summer, Jason's not happy with Jason. Which Jason? We do not know. <laughs> this Jason needs to die. Jason keeps pressing on to Shelly. And she tells Jason to go physically gratify himself and get psychological help. Yeah, she's like, I know I'm not formally a doctor yet, but it is my professional opinion that you need to go get some psychological help. Shelly leaves. Jason grabs the attention of another woman by saying, Jason, likey, likey. <laughs> and then uh, and then uh, Shelly drives to a building <laughs> we find out is a morgue, and she starts to perform a autopsy. A random corpse. Well, she had told Jason that she needed to leave because she has finals. So, or she has to study for finals. So, I'm assuming that she's practicing on the cadaver for her finals because she's studying to be a physician. No, she just wanted to go cut up a corpse. Let's just be honest. You know, nobody would have access to that building unless there was a reason. I know after bad dates, I like to go randomly cut up corpses. It's just a thing. It's well, just a thing. Well, when I have a bad day, the smell of formaldehyde is the only thing that calms me. The smell of formaldehyde just, you know, takes me back. I also like to take shots of it, so it really calms me down. <laughs> <laughs> I also like to sniff my corpse for <sighs> Um As she gets ready to cut open the corpse, she hears what sounds like glass breaking. Uh, Shelly goes and investigates like every good person does. No, what I hate is she says, Hello, is anyone there? Uh, hiya, I'm just here to murder you. Uh, The only person there to protect her is a corpse. And, you know, he's pretty stiff. Don't think he's going to be any help. I'm going to come at you with this big knife. Uh, You go run and scream. I'll just wait here till you get tired out. The only thing he's good for is listening. Yeah. And of course, we have to go down the obligated dark hallway. Then we have the obligated jump scare. And it's a nameless student who decided that he's just had too much for tonight. He's been rocking too many corpses. Uh, he is worn out. He's got his fill of formaldehyde. You know, he, he's ready to crack open a cold one. Unless he's already done that. Yeah. Uh... Then Shelly sees a random card with her name on it. She reads it aloud and it says... It was on her locker. I was wondering where... I must have looked down at the wrong time. I was wondering where it came from. Just random card in hand. You rewinded the movie so many times. I, I saw things I didn't I, even see. Yeah. Mm. Uh, tells you how much invested I was into this film at the time. She sees, her, uh, she sees it on her locker... Uh, with her name on it, which is weird that they have a locker in this hallway like it's high school. They're grad students. Well, wouldn't there be lockers like closer to that area that they're in? That's in a prep room? That's what I'm trying to get at. There was the lockers. To the right was like a, a type of, what is it? Um, what do you call where you change out and all that? Changing room? Yeah, uh, but for showers room. and stuff. Prep room with showers in it? No, that was to the right, and then to the left is where she was doing okay. her well, whatever. I, I mean, the point is, okay. But she, they would need 
No, no, they do. The locker I, for their... It's just, it just seems like in every... Lab coat and change of clothes or whatever, because they if they get dirty, they're going to need to shower and change and I all know, that. but it just seems like every... Like, a lot of horror films that are taking places in colleges... Locker room, good God. You would think, logically, that the lockers would have been in the locker room, like where the showers and stuff were, but... That's what I was trying to get at. Like, that's what I'm trying this to say. This is filmed in Canada, so... No, it just seems like they Maybe treat Maybe their procedures every... are slightly different. They, but they treat like every college like it's high school number 2.0 with the same layout. That's what I was trying to get at. It's just every, it seems like a lot of, with lab classes, they have lockers on the outside like they do in high school, which is false. If they have lockers that are in the classroom. Like, I always had lockers in classrooms that I had. Like, they had a bank of like, just sort of like an offshoot room if it's in a lab. Or you carry your stuff into the lab. I never had lockers in labs. Depending on school. But I never had them outside like they do in high school. Like a wall of them. I did. Again, depends on school. So why are you freaking out? It's a movie. I know, it just bothers me. Uh, okay, so it reads, and it says, The journey of loves and the uh, arduous trek... <laughs> My love grows for you as you bleed from your neck. Such a romantic sentiment. Then she pulls a tab because it's like a pop-up book. Uh, and then they, we see the male figure moves his arm to reveal a knife. And the female character is uh, uh, has her throat sliced. She gets spooked out but thinks nothing of it. So she heads back to her dissection. When the corp takes you a large... Uh, and she you missed a detail. Wow. At the bottom of the card, it's signed JK. Or JM. No, it's JK. JK Rollins. Is that you, Harry? Or is it JM? Is it JK or JK? JM. It was hard to see how it, where it was at. It was There was a border around the illustration of the card. Yeah. And it was right there in between where the border started and ended so the j was very visible but the last letter wasn't yeah. so it kind of looked like a k anyway jm my apologies and then she goes back to her dissection she starts to insert ready to insert she the corpse takes a large breath and then inhales she freaks out and backs up to see the uh see the corpse named chad is just chilling in the fridge she turns around after chad falls out of uh, onto the floor and to see the once was cadaver gone she picks up the scalpel and goes to searching she walks over to the door to find it locked because you know reasons she hears a noise as she has her back to some curtains a arm grabs her somehow she gets away and gets out of the autopsy room she runs down the hallway as a person and a black trench coat and a cherub mask gingerly walks after her. Shelly then enters a room. It's full of body bags. So what do you do in a full a room full of body bags? Start humping. Uh, I think we forgot to mention that this is not appropriate for children. Uh, yeah. Then we see the cherub mask person enter said body bag room. First they start unzipping the bags, but decide unzipping was just too labor intensive. And uh, they didn't get paid enough for this. So they started plunging the knife into the bags. One after another, the chair... There's an individual person and you're referring to him as they. It's non-gender specific. They usually implies that it's plural. It? The murderer. The masked figure. Whatever. I don't know. One after another, the chair killer narrows down the search to the last body bag where the killer unzips it. Shelly screams, and we get kill number one. Shelly got bagged. Shelly got bagged. I like big bags, and I cannot lie. And the killer slices her throat. I give it a three out of five. Then we get a close-up of the mask, and we see blood is coming from its nose, streaming down like Jimmy's nose from the dance. The killer zips the bag back up as the blood drains out and leaves. Because they have an important date, too. Then we see Paige and Kate as we talk about dating as Kate goes to a speed date event and we get subjected to a crew of creeps and cringes. We see Paige likes attention 
and swoops in on a few of the good ones as they are leaving. I mean, this is a very short scene, to be honest. And as they are leaving to get, as they are leaving, they get a phone call. We can guess that they found out about Shelly because we are now at a funeral. Kate is talking with her ex, Adam, which we find out they recently split up because he had a bit of a drinking problem because he let the water dribble out of the corner of her, his mouth and she did not like it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So one of my favorite scenes from the movie or favorite lines is where uh, Paige tells Kate that relationships don't make U-turns. Adam is a drunk. Kate tells Paige Adam is not a drunk. He has a borderline addictive personality who happens to like alcohol a lot. Does uh-huh. It? Well, the reason why that's brought up because Kate finds a bottle of tequila under a paper which he wrote. He says it's for a friend and that he hasn't touched the stuff for a while. <clears throat> so, for three weeks. Three whole weeks. Three whole weeks. It's a long time. It is. And he wants to do something this weekend and she is undecided. After Adam leaves, the rest of the crew meet up and start talking. Then they talk about how a detective is asking questions. Like magic, he starts asking them questions. Detective Vaughn asks when is the last time they saw Shelly, which was like one to two years because she was in medical school and she was just too busy to hang out with her bestest friends in the whole wide world. And that they knew, and then he asked if they knew a Jason because he was a missing too. Jason wasn't happy. Jason wasn't missing. Uh, Jason sad. Jason sad. <laughs> <laughs> Jason is tied up. Jason is scared. Jason pooed himself. <laughs> Jason wet. Jason wet. <laughs> Jason needs a new diaper. <laughs> <laughs> then he gives Paige his card and goes away. Mind you, Paige is the hot one. Yeah, to some people maybe. Uh, and then we see Dorothy coming home to her family's mansion, where she just kicks up her shoes. Uh, first thing she does is go through the, she comes across a card similar to Shelley's that reads, Roses are red, violets are blue, they'll need dental records to identify you, JM. And I like that card, because it rhymed. <laughs> it's catchy. Then the doorbell rings. She looks at all the. She looks at the housekeeper. She opens the door to see a guy in a leather jacket named Campbell at the door. Campbell gives a sob story that his roommate split, didn't pay the rent, and all of his stuff was on the side of the road. But all the good stuff, such as you know his Limp Biscuit CD and uh, his clothes and his skis, were gone, and that he had no money because it's all in a startup that he is obviously starting um, makes sense yeah dorothy summons millie the housekeeper to make up a guest bed but she protests because yeah reasons then we see a young she didn't want to do it yeah well then we see a young uh, woman come down the stairs in a silk robe dorothy tells her that she met campbell three weeks ago in a yoga class and he is off limits and a small scuffle of you're not my stepmom plays out and the father comes down to take the side of the trophy wife. Next we see Kate washing her hair when she hears something. So she goes, wraps it up in a towel and gets out to find no one there. And that the water has stopped working. Old pipes. They're finicky. She calls her landlord Murray about the water issue. And that she has crap in her hair. And then she unplugs her iron that's magically on. So she has her hair in the towel. After that, the phone rings. She runs to it and answers only to hear static. Then she hears the elevator opening and reopening. And notices the door to her apartment is wide open. I forgot to say that she dipped her hair in the toilet water. That came after uh, Kate goes into investigate to find a cherub mask placed in the path of the door. 
Then Gary, the creepy, awkward neighbor, pops out and asks her out with no avail. Then we are at Paige's and... I forgot to fill that in. Blank's apartment. They are going through the Love Connection tapes. Remember the Love Connection tapes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, when the doorbell rings... Lily. Lily. Uh, when the doorbell rings, Lily checks the peephole... A joke is made, and Lily opens the door to find no one there, but a card is left on the doorstep. It reads as well, known fact that beauty is only skin deep. Savior of the taste, you are what you eat, love, J.M. Uh, they start guessing who could it be uh, from, and we find Paige is a letter collector. Paige tells the Valentines is for her, so with glee, she opens it to the box of chocolates and takes a bite out of it. Because I always eat random boxes of chocolate that is found on my doorstep. Always. Never question where anything comes from that is magically on your doorstep with a creepy card. Always eat that stuff. Always. Always. You only live once, and sometimes it's short. But life is not too short for chocolate. Life is like a box of chocolates. You don't know which one's poison. Uh, and it takes a bite out of one and re uh, realizes, with disappointment, it's strawberry marshmallow with maggots in it. Oh! I don't love the strawberry marshmallow. That's just my own personal hatred. But that would suck if it was like a really crappy one with ma with maggots in it. Strawberry marshmallow. How would you know what flavor it is if you're too busy barfing it's, up the maggots? It's maggot flavored. Yeah. It's meaty. Mm. It's meat flavored. Um, Lily freaks out. Then we see them sitting in some chair and a couch as Paige goes through Lily's history of men, which is, mm. I guess, quite mm. long. And with the initial with the initials JM, until we come across Jeremy Milton. Lily doesn't remember, but it's Paige Milton. 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 That was Milton. I like Milton better. Lily doesn't remember, but Paige does. And then after a small a small joy of memory, Lily remembers, and they start making fun of him. Lily wonders what happened to him, and Paige shows him some re uh, shows some remorse. Yeah, later in the timeline, Paige, Kate, Lil Lily, or Paige and Kate are at an art show talking about what happened to each of them. When they see Jason, Paige wants her to come over, and then he disappears with anger on his face. Jason, not happy. Later, Lily meets up with them, with the artist Max. Then Paige runs into Campbell. Uh, hits on him. Hits on him. And Dorothy turns, uh, turns around the corner. Not very happy. Jason now laughing. Actually, Dorothy had a huge smile on her face because for once, she was the pretty one. Yeah. She introduces uh, the girls to her beau, uh, Campbell. Then the show starts. Uh, they go through a very erotic maze at the art show. Lily and the artist are making out in the maze and his assistant, who was unbuttoning her blouse, he invited her there. Lily was not happy about this. She gave him a piece of her mind and storms off. Jason getting horny. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Nike. <laughs> As she's getting lost through the maze, a random slot opens through the maze to reveal a section she could walk through. And then an arrow comes after her and she gets shot through the heart. Jason shot. Shot through the heart with an arrow. And then she gets flung into a dumpster. Well, uh, that that's That, that uh, crossbow's got some stopping power. Or is it that bow and arrow has some stopping power to it? Yeah. So number two is Lily shot through the heart. But it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> some of these I just couldn't help myself. It just, it's perfect. Just couldn't help it. What would you have, uh? Rated that one. Uh, you don't come up with these quippy names like I do. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. 
I think I have to give it a three out of five. <laughs> Adam meets Kate for a talk. They catch up. He asks her again about them trying for a relationship. She says you drink and you're a different person when you do. So if you have to wait a little longer and you have changed, then what would the harm be? He says, okay. Jason likes a little drinky boo ran. <laughs> <laughs> Kate, Paige, and Dorothy talk to, de to Detective Vaughn. He asks where Lily is. They say, out of town. They had thought they answered all of his questions, but he asks about cards sent to Shelley's parents. Signed, Jeremy Melton. J.M. They explained who he is and that they were they have gotten cards signed J.M. He was aggravated they had not said anything about this before. He didn't think a kid who they teased in sixth grade was much of a lead, but he said he would check it out anyway. Dorothy tells her friends she knows she will be the next one because she had him sent to that reform school. They try and ease her mind by reminding her that he attacked her. She confesses that he didn't. She says you wouldn't understand. I was fat. I was big bang. <laughs> I did you big bang. Um, he was the only one who showed, who showed me attention. And when we got caught, I was embarrassed. So I lied and said he attacked me. I felt so bad. But not as bad as eating five cans of ravioli. <laughs> if you can't do Cartman, then don't do it. <laughs> but, I, but I'm not. <laughs> I know you're not, so stop. Adam comes over for dinner, but decides not to go up to Kate's apartment. You know, because the last time, things got out of hand. The detective reads to them what he found out in Jeremy Melton's file, but he has no idea where he could be now or what he looks like. He questions all three about boyfriends and seems especially interested in Paige. Yeah, well, we know he why. He asks her to stay when he is finished with questions as he has a few more for her. He asks her to sit down. He asks her what they are going to do about this tension. And she's like, what tension? She tells him to remove his hand from her thigh. He says, where should I put it? She says, I don't know. How about up your boop? And have a nice day and leaves. He says, so you'll get back to me on that? <laughs> Not in this lifetime. Kate's apartment, the killer walks in, finds the iron steaming as she forgets it's plugged in. Her neighbor is found in her room playing in her underwear drawer. But it's not what it looks like. I'm really sick, man. <laughs> the masked killer catches him and irons his face repeatedly. Dorothy is upset that Campbell was questioned for hours. That was a four out of five, by the way. Okay. I really didn't write that one down, but... Dorothy is upset that Campbell was questioned for hours. So Paige suggests for her to make it up to him. She gives him a Valentine's gift. Then they have private time. But he has trouble performing. She tells him it's fine then goes to shower. He gives her his gift as she gets out of the shower. It's a necklace. Yeah, like an angel necklace. I think it's Cupid. Whatever. And he tells her he has an investor's meeting, but wants to get a quick workout in before. He goes to the pool room to make private phone calls and in the middle of one to the bank, Dorothy pages him from the main house to see if he can go to the basement to light the pilot light to the water tank so it will give the main house hot water again. Really? That's what a hot water tank does? He's very mad, but agrees and 
once he gets off the pager with her, he's like, what am I? The hired help? So I think it was her dad information he was trying to get the money out of. Yes, he was trying to wire money, pretending to be someone else, and I can only get think it transferred. It was, yeah, I, like all the money. So all I could think of was maybe her dad. It was someone's that wasn't him. So yeah. he was being very swindly. He finds the faulty water heater and matches, scratches multiple matches before when it lights. He knocks down the... He, he gets down, and then he knocks the matches down, and that right. just irritates the crap out of me. He goes through a couple before it lights. Then, as he gets up, he gets an axe in the back. Yes, for some odd reason, there is a wood chopping block right next to the hot water heater in the basement. That's where I like to chop wood. Well, I think the pool is maybe in a guest house that's adjoining <sighs> yes. the main house. But the question is, is why is there a wood chopping block in the basement, by the hot water heater. I don't know. Is that where you like to chop So convenient. Wood? Anyway, I guess this is number four. So Campbell gets the cut. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm glad to see him go. Yeah, he was not a good person. I don't even care. He was just sort of a lame character. Jason s- said bye-bye. <laughs> the party... Dorothy had planned a party. So the party begins... Dorothy is in the formal dining room eating her feelings because Campbell hasn't showed up and she thinks she's been dumped. I mean, this is a pretty awesome party, though. Like, it's all... Well, she went all out, but people are pretty bored. Well, I mean, somebody went all out with all the money. (laughs) I don't think it was her. (laughs) Well, she planned it, but... Yeah, I think she had Daddy's bank account. Kate tries to rescue her, but nothing works. Adam shows up, and that upsets Dorothy even more, so she leaves. Brian shows up to see Paige again. That upsets Dorothy. He tells Paige he would much rather see her upstairs. He has a surprise for her. Brian is one of the guys that... Was on the speed dating thing. Was on speed dating. And when Paige and, and Kate went... if you don't went, know what speed dating is, it's like the real life version of uh, Tinder. When Paige and Kate went, while Kate was talking to him, Paige kind of interrupted because they were sitting next to each other and kindly stole her last four or five minutes of time with him and gave him her number and all that. That's what we did back in the day. So she says, you brought me up here. They go upstairs and she says, so you brought me up here to show me your penis. How sweet. Look, it's so small. It's like a thumb. (laughs) (laughs) He says, well, honey, what are you waiting for? Wax it. I've never heard that term before in my entire life. I don't want to hear that term again. She goes to leave. He stops her. She stays and gets him to take off all of his clothes and lay on the bed. She ties him to the bed and says, it's a surprise. And every time I, and every time you hear that, you know, somebody you don't know, this is how you lose a kidney. I, I don't like surprises, but anyway. He says, I know when I met you, you were kinky, Paige. She asked if he still wanted her to wax it. He says, yes. So she blindfolds him and she dumps all of the melted wax from one of the candles near the bed onto his genitals. Mm, I don't think he's going to ask for that request ever again. Well, he should never ask for that request from the get-go. It's a stupid name. Waxing things. Unless you're going to physically wax it. Yeah, well, he thought he was being s- smart and quippy, but it's really just dumb. It's really just cringe. Yeah. She leaves the room and leaves the door open. This is how you lose a kidney. Mm. She goes downstairs and tells Kate the party blows. Kate says, so, it didn't go well with Brian. Kimball's ex shows up and tells Dorothy 
the necklace she is wearing was stolen from her. Now he's only interested in your trust fund, darling. And he doesn't love her. He loves her trust fund. Kate and Paige shows her the way out. Kate, I'm sorry, Paige takes a glass and a bottle of champagne to another area to drink. The ex-girlfriend snuck back in with a crowd of other people. She went into Campbell's room and snooped through all of his things and took his watch. Which was a gift from Dorothy and it was like a Rolex. Right. So it wasn't just like, oh look, you got me a Walmart watch. It was a Rolex. There ain't no case. So she goes downstairs to a den area and sees the killer dragging the dead maid. She hits him over the head, but this only stops the pursuit for a moment. She hides in the steam room under the bench. While under there, she finds Campbell's body. She thinks the coast is clear, leaves the room, but the killer comes up behind her, throws her through the glass shower door, then impales her on the remaining glass. So, the X gets the cut. The cut as well. Mm. I go to 4.5. It was pretty good. It's one of the best kills in this entire movie. Kate goes to Dorothy and tells her that Lily never showed up in L.A. Max called her office and found out. Detective Vaughn called Kate to say they had to let... What does that say? The dog's out. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the guy he had in custody? Jason. Yeah. Jason got caught. He said, he said it by his last name, though. Well, it started with an M. It was like a marrow or whatever. Yeah, it was whatever. whatever. So they had to let Jason go. They didn't have enough evidence to hold him on. She tells him about Lily. He says, stay in groups. He is on his way. So Dorothy says, her dad has a gun in his study. They go through the house. But Kate doesn't want to have the gun because that's how people die. In the formal dining room, Kate sees Adam drinking. He says he was looking for her. She says, yeah, at the bottom of the bottle. Paige is in the hot tub, relaxing alone. The door shuts behind her. She's not alone. She has a bottle of... Uh, champagne. Champagne. This gets her attention. Then she notices a rose by the champagne bottle. She gets over to it. She calls out, hello, several times. It's just me, the killer. Yeah, that irritates me so much. <laughs> and asked, does someone want to be my valentine? Just me, the killer. She is sweet at first, then gets angry and starts looking through the foliage that surrounds the hot tub area. You're pretty cool. She still sees no one. She turns around, and there the killer is. Hiya. The masked murderer. She falls into the hot tub, and the killer pulls the hard, clear top over and locks it down. Then drills into the top until they're able to hit her with the drill. Then unlocks the top and throws the drill that's still unplugged into the water with her. It's splish splash. I'm taking a shock. Zap zap. <laughs> Boom. Lights cir circuit out throughout the house. The party cleans out quickly. So Paige gets a shock. Splish splash. Zap zap. This is actually one of my favorite kills. It is. I am glad she is dead. It's bloody, it's gory, and you, you, really have the are glad. you have the anticipation of when is she going to get hit with that drill? No, uh, to me, it's I'm glad that the, this character is dead. She is... Everybody holds her on this pedestal because mm. they think she's pretty, and she has a horse face. 
And her personality is just... I realize it's a character, but... No, no, no. Didn't, I, I'll, I'll go through it at the end. Less so. Yeah, it's just... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Katie and Dorothy are walking around watching the party scatter. They talk about where Paige is. Dorothy said she always ends up in the hot tub at these parties. Dorothy asked Kate where Adam was. She says he could be Jeremy Melton. Kate says by the same token Campbell could be. Dorothy storms off. Yes, because we can't have Cam- we can't have Campbell do anything bad. He's perfect. But we don't know Campbell's last name. Kate puts on her jacket and goes outside and calls the detective. She hears a phone ring outside when she calls his phone. She follows the rings. She finds his phone out by the pond in the back garden. And his head was under the IOU she had written Adam, which was inside the pond. Kate freaks and runs inside yelling for Paige and Dorothy. I have to admit, this was a hilarious scene. When that head bobbed up. That head was so fake. Adam slowly walks down the stairs. Says hi to Kate. She says, It's you. You're still here. She said, I heard a noise. I thought someone, something happened to Dorothy. He says, Dorothy is a big girl. Yeah, she was. <laughs> She says, what do you mean? He says, dance with me. She is wanting to check on her friend. He says, I'm asking you nicely. So she moves closer to dance. He says, you know, I screwed up, Kate. He said, I know I disappointed you. She said, I'm just worried you would hurt me. He said, hurt you? Hurt you? No, you're the only good thing in my life. The others can just all die as far as I care. But you, hey, you mean something to me. Baby, what's the matter? You're shaking. I don't want to hurt either, but I will... And she knees him in the no-no zone and runs upstairs. And, and all this time he's saying this is a very ominous... Right. It's like, mm-hmm. he's coming down the stairs slowly and he's it's all dark and he's mm-hmm. like, I'll never leave you. Right. Blah, blah, blah. She bursts into Dorothy's room and no one is there. He finds her upstairs and asks her what's going on. She says, sorry, I guess I'm just upset about the drinking. She runs and slams the door and goes into the hot tub room and finds Paige floating in the covered hot tub. She screams and goes back the way she came. Adam says, I love you. I always loved you. She tells him to stay away from her. He says, ah, Kate. And walks closer. She cracks him over the head with a champagne bottle. And runs. That's when she finds Ruthie, the ex. So she goes the way she came again. She goes into the study. Tries the phone. The line is busy. Remembers about the guns. She breaks the glass. Pulls out a handgun. Pushes a button and pops out the slide. Fumbles to put it back in, but finally gets it in. You mean the magazine? Magazine, yeah. And looks very awkward holding this gun. She walks through the downstairs den, goes up the stairs, and there he is. He meets her at the top. And they both fall down the stairs. Kate gets up. She looks very awkward holding the gun. She walks through the downstairs den and goes up the stairs. The killer, because they're wearing the mask, meets her at the top, and they both fall down the stairs. Kate gets up, 
then the killer. Adam shoots the killer multiple times. He goes over and pulls off the mask, and it's Dorothy. Dun, dun, dun. He calls the cops to report. Kate says, sorry for earlier. He says, it's in the past. She says it doesn't make sense. She was so happy a couple of weeks ago. He says, some can seem happy, but they're dying inside. And loving them just isn't enough. They just snap one day. She says, so deep. I love you, Adam. He says, I love you too, Kate. I always have. She hugs him. He puts his arm around her. He has a nosebleed and it drips down onto her. Or the screen the screen fades as it drips onto her face. And you hear a scream. So they have that dialogue before that. Yeah, happens. yeah, yeah. All right. That's him trying to explain yeah, just... how it could be Dorothy when, you know. Yeah. All right. Give your score. I think you should do yours first. I get a 2.5 out of 5. And why is that? There's a lot of reasons for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a lot going on in this film. A lot of like little subplots and a lot of noise, but no real substance. On the first view, it's okay. On the second viewing, it just drags. The dialogue is simple and is expect. And it, um, Maybe it dragged because you paused it and went back about 400 times. You want me to take notes? I'm taking notes. <laughs> and you you just... You basically see stuff coming a mile away. It's, it's all the same tropes over and over again. You always get in every horror film. Mm-hmm. Some parts of the film I like was The Creepy Neighbor... And uh, some of the later kills. Yeah. Some things I found tiring was the, uh, was really tiring was them pushing Paige or Denise Rich, uh, Denise Richards, which in every film she's ever in, she's always the sex symbol, mm-hmm. and she's always one dimensional sex symbol yeah. character, and everybody has a crush on Paige, and everybody just gets really awkward around her, and it just gets so tiring. I just realized that this would be a really great film to do a spoof of. Yeah. Uh, Because it it just hits all those points of just kind of, you know. Like, there was no reason to have the whole, like, I feel sexual tension bond. Like, there's just no point in it. Well, because it's very much a psychological film. And the men in this film, all the male characters in this film see one thing that the female characters don't feel or see. All of the male characters in this film are that way. Uh, Yes, it's just... But it's just... But it's not... But you're adding depth to something that's not very deep. I mean, it's just not a very deep film. Do you realize how many writers this film had? I know. There's like six of them. And that's that's another issue. You can tell that it's like different... That's what I'm saying. There's a lot of noise, but not any substance to it. There's just so many people writing something. Well, and they probably did it that way to where no matter who's viewing it, they could get something out of it. I guess. But this film is very much a psychological type thriller that has horror aspects. Yeah. And I, we've talked about that several times. The fact that so many films are labeled horror when really that probably shouldn't be the first tag that they're given. It's probably... This film is more of a psychological type thriller with horror aspects. Yeah. And then I go on about the whole Denise Richard thing. It's like every scene she's in, uh, they focus on her. I don't know if you ever noticed that. Like every, you know, like. She's one of my least favorite uh, actresses ever. She has more sexual situations. She had the longest death scene, which in itself was sexy. Yeah, because she was frailing about and she was wearing a bikini and, and she was wet and she you know the, and even like the, the there was the rose there's the champagne it was a very romantic setup mm-hmm. of darkness and jacuzzis and and you can even look at it from like the drill scene that going into the, the the lid as penetration i mean you can really read a lot more into 
but everything about it was just sexual. So, so you just tried to tell me five seconds ago that it wasn't that deep, and you're making it deep. Because you started something. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the timeline was hard to follow from day to day. The head of Detective Juan was laughably fake. I mean, it was just so bad. Like, they just didn't care anymore at this point. He they looked ke- awfully surprised when that head was removed. <laughs> he was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. And it was very... There goes my head. I yeah. hate when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Every case. Oh. Every case. The, the killer I know at the end... <laughs> It's pretty much said it was Adam was the killer, but I'm not in favor of that. The killer is re- relatively short, uh, statured, and not as broad as Adam. Even if like the char- like even the actor himself is like six three, mm-hmm. and he's broad. Right. And then the killer itself was short. I know it's like that trench coat, but you especially in a trench coat, you can tell somebody how broad they are. Yeah. it brings that out. Um, and but it's black. Black is so slimming. <laughs> Not that slimming. <laughs> Every time I wear black, I don't shrink three inches. <laughs> I don't magically turn into 5'8". <laughs> Look, I'm wearing a black coat. I'm 5'8 now. Nope, my head says the other way. <laughs> uh, I'd rather it be Jason or Dorothy. Jason because he was the one that was, he was there... But not in the main focus. And it just really bring that in. Like towards, you know, like the beginning and the end. I, I like that aspect. Plus he has like a narrow frame and everything. So it makes a lot more sense. Plus I would just sort of want to think that Jason underneath is a... Uh, underneath the mask is going, Jason stabby stabby. Jason stabby stabby. Um, here comes Jason. I also like the idea of Dorothy because uh, she has so much anger towards her friends in a way uh why not both i mean why not like team up because i mean you think about it she, every situation was perfect for dorothy to be the killer you don't know if she wasn't because they left that kind of open but if you actually read anything about the movie like i was reading something after it which i normally don't do but it was just like one of those things and they're like no we uh the studio what? the only reason why adam had the bleeding nose at the end was to point that Adam was the killer. The studio made them do that. Mm. Because they wanted Adam to be the killer. Because they wanted to give a finality. Where the director's idea was to just, you know, make it who's ever... Was it Dorothy? Was it Jason? Leave it kind of open. Yeah. And sort of... Well, see, I prefer that kind of aspect of leaving the mystery there. Yeah. The party could be... I mean, that kind of defeats the whole point of having the setup there. Of having Dorothy, him framing Dorothy, even though he had a little bit of a nosebleed, it still makes you question if she had something to do with it. If she assisted him in some way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It still leaves it kind of open for questioning. Yeah. And I said, and the party could be a way that she could finish the job <laughs> of being the killer and she would be scot free. You know, like. Right. She could have wanted Adam all to herself. I don't think it was Adam had anything to do with it. I think it was just, there was so much, she was always the butt of the joke. She was always the fat girl. And surrounded by the hot friends. You know, we had Paige, who was the sexual (laughs) girl. We have Lily, who was the outgoing, well-dressed quote unquote popular popular yeah. chick kate the smart one shelly i mean shelly the smart one kate the innocent one and here's dorothy the and the main reason you could say that she they were even friends with her was that she mm-hmm. was rich right she had she came from a wealthy family mm-hmm. and they pitied her because yeah she was big bone but I think it had more to do with she was rich. Mm-hmm. And then they saw that as a way to, if we're friends with the rich fat chick, we're able to... Open doors in other yeah, ways. Yeah. So that's that's why I think, I mean, I would prefer it to be Dorothy 
or and J- and Jason he because like the reason why I'm saying Jason is because we see him at the art gallery and every, and he saw the girls. Jason was not at the art gallery. Yeah, he was. That's Brian. No. Jason was not at the art gallery. That was Brian. The dude that Paige had the wax thing with. No. Jason was there briefly. He was in the background. Okay, maybe I'm telling you it was, but maybe it was mistaken identity. It was Brian. Jason was just in the first part of the film. I was pretty sure it was Jason. I think Brian and Jason were in there. I'm pretty sure it was just Brian. Well, I'm just saying, I thought I saw Jason in there. I'm tired of... Which, there was somebody who scolded at the girls when I was... That's what I'm trying to say. I think it was Jason, not Brian. Because it was before the whole waxing incident. There was a character that saw the girls as they were walking together. He seemed... He was happy. And then he got really pissed. And he was stormed off. It was a very brief second... Jason never met any of the girls. He only met... That's my point. He was at the show. He never met them. But if he was Jeremy, he would have known. It was There was no formal introduction. All I'm saying is that at one point, the camera... like They pointed out to him in a crowd. He was happy. Then he got scolded and walked off. That's it. There was no formal interaction. There was no talking to him outside of the first one. He was at the gallery, I'm just saying. But my point is, they had a conversation, the girls did, and pointed him out. They would not have known that was him because they didn't no, know. No, but I think... They didn't know what he looked like. They no. knew what Brian looked like because no. they met him in speed dating. Yes, both of them were there. That's what I was trying to say. It didn't have to be one or the other. It, I was saying both of them were there, but we got a brief interaction with Jason there, but Brian was there. I know Brian was there because they pointed him out. They Yes, but Jason was never him. pointed out. That's what I'm trying to say. They never physically pointed him out. I'm saying the camera work did. Hmm. And it was a brief second of him in a crowd. He was happy. He saw the girls walking. When they were all together, walking... Then he got pissed off and walked away. So it put him in that position of where he could have been the killer. Hmm. And it would make sense because, like I said, he was a background character the entire time. Right. And since he, the, no the one knew... The detective said that they had him in custody and had to let him go. And since no one knew what he looked like, right. and he matches the frame style, and I'm just saying like all of this makes more sense... Because that's what I liked about this movie to some extent was if they would just kept it a mystery and that was true. That's why I was like, I'm really hoping it's Jason. To some extent, because I like that here's this narcissistic person who had to be, who taught himself to be narcissistic because he was in juvie, he was in an insane asylum, his family got burnt. Mm. Uh, And then they lost track of him. So he would have changed his identity, which could have ended in... And then he, with that revenge because of that dance, because of just that... Keeping the same name wouldn't be changing his identity. He didn't. His name was originally Jeremy, then he changed it to Jason. Okay. Jay's it confused me. I get what you're saying. They, It had a lot more layers to where it could have... There was many possibilities of what killer it could have been. Or if not, like... Mm. Weirdly enough, it could have been both, but it more par- like Dorothy and Jason, but parallel, not intersecting at all. Like they just happen to sort of pick on the same symbology or whatever mm-hmm. of, because I mean, during that dance, we did see that mask, and that mask was a thing, or it could have been like Kate brought up the mask thing, then spiraled the whole Dorothy thing. For somebody that said this wasn't that deep, you're really digging a hole, aren't you? I wanted to be better than what it was. <laughs> like you are digging a massive hole over here. You're digging a pit, mm. man. You gonna build a park next? Yep. Goodness. Lot forty five. Had to fill that thing in. So I give this film a three point seven five out of a five. Um the storyline was pretty good. The ending I felt was a little open so you can kind of make your own interpretation as you know the bunny man just took us on that 
kind of roller coaster ride there that I did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I felt the kills were pretty sur sporadic, and most were kind of meh, and some weren't even shown, which, um, you know, we liked the kills, so that but was this was early 2000s film. Which was again like they weren't trying to show kills. Right. It was trying to be they more artsy kind of and yeah. Into the time of where they were starting to do that, I felt like the creepy Valentines really did add a nice touch because <coughs> they were very, they looked homemade. They were very artistic and detailed. I really liked that, and you know they had little rhymes and. Told the people, told the person how they were going to die. Yeah. Nice touch. And that's pretty much where my thought pattern ended because, you know. You got four, but nothing there. Yeah. We did a lot of these like back to back to back really late. And uh, I was just like, yep, that's good enough. So. <laughs> All right. But overall, I really did like it. Uh, like we had talked about. I feel like it probably should have been more of like a psychological thriller with horror type aspects to it because that's really kind of the feel that you get of it. It's a very psychological based. The killer really had like psychological type issues and that's kind of the route that the film takes is the twist and turns are really kind of psychological based and there's a lot of layers to it and just so happen he kills people i mean that's really what you get from it not to say that's bad but that's something we've talked about before you know a lot of horror films are labeled horror because they meet certain criteria not because the main premise of the film is horror related so well and i looked at it as it's a pretty two-dimensional film that you can sort of make out your own judgment and how much depth, and I don't think it was executed. Where I felt like this was a poorly executed film with too many writers. I think that was a major downfall, is it didn't have a cohesive vision. I don't think it would have had the depth that it has if it only had a few. I think that's what gave it the substance. Which I think it caused more of a chaotic noise mess. Would you recommend this movie? I think it's worth watching. I feel like early 2000 films like it's okay it's one of the better i think this film would be very fun to make a spoof of i also think it would get i mean i think this is one film i could say like i wouldn't mind seeing a reboot of it like a remake of it or something if done right if done right and if the director from what i read was allowed to do what he wanted to do compared to what the studio demanded him to do well you know you gotta go with whoever's making, writing the checks. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we saw that a lot in the early two thousands. It was very much that's when we started really getting into the studio like demands, and it was all like this is what the critics want or this is what um, the the test audience preferred. You know, at least that's how we got what we got during the early 2000s with the horror films. They had a weird mixture between the western and eastern concepts of horror. So, other than that, that was a little coaster, wasn't it? I think that's about all of this Valentine 2001. Yep. I'm going to go around the house now. You guys are doing worse than me. Jason, go Jason, go stab, he's dead. Bye, bye. We'll scare you later. Jason, Jason, stab, he's dead.